Welcome to another video from the Heart Factory. In today's video, we will be talking about the Heart Lung Machine, its various components, how each component works, the safety mechanisms that are in the Heart Lung Machine, and finally, we will end the video with the use of this machine in heart surgery, both in kids and in grown up patients. Now, what is a heart lung machine? It's one of the greatest inventions of the 20th century that has made lives of cardiac surgeons easy. It has allowed to conduct cardiac surgeries across a spectrum of diseases. And by definition, it is nothing but a combination of the machine, the tubings, the oxygenator, reservoir, and various safety mechanisms. This machine is manned by a person called the perfusionist. Ideally, they, are, they should be called the perfusion technologist. He is not only a technician, but he is also a person who addresses the physiological and other metabolic changes that occur whilst the blood is drawn out of the body. So in general, he should be referred to as a perfusion technologist. And I dedicate this series of videos to all the perfusion technologists across the globe who are making a difference to the life of cardiac patients. So in this first series, we'll talk about a few components of the heart-lung machine. In the next series, the other few components of the heart-lung machine. And finally, we'll culminate with the actual use of the machine in a real patient, in a real scenario, in the operating theater. I hope you all will like this video. So let's get started. So this is our chief perfusion technologist at Meenakshi Hospital. Now coming to the heart lung machine as such, there are various components of this machine and we'll get started describing one by one, right from the power panel at the bottom to the connections panel, to the roller pump which is on off with its on off button. Coming to the back of each roller pump, you find exit points, entry and exit points, which are quite interesting and will be quite different for each roller pump. Later on in the coming series, discuss about the timer, the blender which controls the oxygen air mixture, the monitor which allows the man running the machine, uh, details about the activities of the heart. The hemotherm allows the patient to either be cooled or warm depending on the situation. Then the lung of the main machine, the so-called oxygenator, it usually comes with the reservoir wherein the whole blood is pooled and uh, both come as a combo. The reservoir also has filters which you can see here and then We'll discuss about the various sizes of tubings used, the situations where they are used and um, the priming volume for each of the tubing. This is the cardioplegia chamber. It houses the pharmacological combination of drugs and blood that when given at the root of the iota stops the heart At the end, we'll talk a bit about the centrifugal component that's used in ECMO. So the first thing we'll talk about is the power panel. Like any machine, heart lung machine also has a power panel which is seen at the base and by default runs on electricity. In situations where there's no power supply, it will still run on battery backup for an hour and a half for 90 minutes. Now the battery situation is described or demonstrated by a series of uh, colored lights at the bottom or the base of the machine. The green being that the battery is fully charged and the red means that the battery is about to die. If you don't get power supply back even after say around an hour and a half after the machine is on battery supply, the red meaning that the battery is about to die and that you may have to resort to manual cranking the individual pumps to generate the outflow.
Now, coming to the connection panel, what you see is various connections. So, not getting much into the details of these connections, your first connection is the power cable. The second is for the battery backup, the cable for the battery backup. And third one would be uh, a safety mechanism wherein it stops the pump if there is inadvertently high pressure at the other end of the roller pump. That's what my profusion team says. The most important uh, part of this panel is that apart from the, the safety wirings, you'll see these cranks. They are a pair of cranks which are meant to be used when you run out of electricity. When power supply is off, the machine tends to run on battery backup for an hour and a half. And uh, even after such a period of time, you don't get back your electricity and the patient is still being on heart lung machine, then you may have to use this crank. One for the main pump head to generate the flow that is required to keep the organs perfused. And the other can be used at intervals between the cardiotomy, cardioplegia and the suckers. Mind you, the crank has to be placed at the top end of the pump, as you see here, and it can be used only in an anti-clockwise fashion. There are various studies on the uses of cranks, which you can refer to by googling use of manual crank on cardiopulmonary bypass. So this is the use of a single crank. So this is the situation wherein you are using both the cranks, one for the main arterial head and the other crank of the left hand of a perfusion uh, team can be shared between the other three or four pump heads depending on the clinical situation. If you want to suck the blood out, then you can put it back on the vent, suck the blood out, then put it back on cardioplegia to give cardioplegia, then back onto the sucker, etc. Whilst the pump head will have a continuous run. In this connection panel, there is a discussion as to how to use this uh, crank as well. So you can refer to it during your free time. Now coming to the roller pump, See, the machines come with five or four or five consoles and what we are showing here is a four console uh, pump. Now you see they are usually meant to run anti-clockwise and the button shows it to run anti-clockwise. You can run it clockwise in special situations. There is a panel up there which has a list of menu and um, the team chooses depending on the patient that has to be put on bypass and the things that they choose is the tubing and uh, usually it's displaced as liters per minute but you can also have revolutions per minute. Now once the motor is on, the panel goes through a mechanism of self-check with the various things that's been displayed and based on the patient that is being operated upon, our perfusion team chooses the tubing. The knob, when turned clockwise, increases the flow or the revolutions of the roller. And as you can see here, the page button has various menus. So now the perfusion team has chosen the quarter inch tubing. And based on that, they have to calibrate the machine for quarter inch. Based ideally, this is calibrated to either half inch tubing or three inch tubing in adults. And if it's a child, then based on the body surface area, they choose a quarter inch tubing. The other pump heads also have the same type of uh, buttons and uh, the other pump heads usually have a quarter inch tubing for cardioplegia, for venting and for suction. Here you see the tubing is being placed in the raceway. Now basically there are arrows which says which end the tube should come in and which end the tube should go out, number one. And uh, those that particular place also stops the tubing from traveling forward when the roller is on. The pump is turned on and you can see it is turning anti-clockwise. This is by default the way the pump is run. It draws the blood from the reservoir and pushes the blood into the oxygenator. The oxygenator has a high resistance, hence it is always placed after the roller pump because you need some force to push blood across the oxygenator. 
and after surgery, if you want to draw the blood back from the aortic cannula to the reservoir, then you will have a clockwise pattern of roller flow. Now here, it draws the blood from the arterial cannula, the tubing, into the reservoir. So there are various types of pumps. Broadly, we classify them into positive displacement and centrifugal pumps. And what you are seeing here is a positive displacement roller pump. Every conventional roller pump produces some pulse style flow. However, one of the methods to generate more pulse style flow during cardiopulmonary bypass is to use intraortic balloon pumping. In other words, pumps are also classified as the one as those that produce a flow, the roller pumps, and those that produce a pressure, that is a centrifugal pump. Roller pumps contain a length of tubing located inside a curved raceway, and this raceway is placed at the travel perimeter of rollers mounted on the ends of the rotating arms. Now these arms are arranged in such a way that one roller is compressing the tubing at all times. By doing so, Blood is pushed ahead of the moving roller, thereby producing a continuous blood flow. Now, the output of this pump is determined by the revolutions per minute of the pump and the volume displaced with each revolution. Of course, the volume again depends on the size of the tubing and the length of the track. So, you may have either one roller or you may have two rollers or you may also have multiple rollers. This is how the flow looks in real time in the patient. It is a low amplitude pulsatile flow, though classically described as non pulsatile in the literature. The single roller pump that historically produced the best pulsatile flow but uh, happened to be discontinued. The double roller pump, which is the most commonly used as you're seeing in this presentation, it consists actually of a 210 degree circular brake backing plate. You see, that is the 210 degrees backing plate and the two rollers with rotating arms which are set at 180 degrees apart. The design is such that when, when one roller ends its occlusive phase, the other has already begun its occlusive phase. So because one of the two rollers is always compressing the tubing, the double roller form generates a relatively, technically speaking, non pulsatile flow, but it is always pulsatile with low amplitude. The so-called multiple roller pump which was tried caused more hemolysis and had to be discontinued. Now the whole benefit of roller pump relies on its capacity to upload to an extent that it does not cause hemolysis and tubing wear and at the same time does not compromise forward output. Coming to the safety mechanisms, there is a magneting lock for each roller pump and the pump functions only when the, the lid over the pump is closed. If for some reason the lift is lifted, the pump stops. So this type of a safe mechanism is available for all the pump heads and the logic is that if the roller is running and inadvertently an instrument or something falls, it leads to damage of both the head and the tubing. So the pump is designed in such a way that it stops if the panel on it is removed. So the magnetic lock is a must for the pump to run. Now coming to the back of the machine, each roller pump has different kind of configurations. The sucker has a place for a single tubing, whereas the vent and cardioplegia have rooms for two tubings in the same roller head. For the cardioplegia, you have room for two tubings of different sizes. So this is designed for a special type of cardioplegia delivery system wherein one tube contains a pharmacological drug that stops the heart and the other tubing draws the blood that has to be mixed with the pharmacological solution to stop the heart. So there is room for almost two tubings of different sizes for the cardioplegia. And this is a special type of delivery system, I guess it's called the myotherm from the Medtronic group. So there are different sizes, smaller tubing at the top and the cartridge at the bottom. Two tubes come into the raceway and they join to form one outside the raceway and it's delivered to the patient. Whereas for the vent, you have room for quarter inch tubing, two tubing, two quarter inch tubing. So this roller head can be used for two vents at the same time. Whereas for the sucker, you find only one 
exit point. So only one cubing can be used per second. I hope you like this video. If you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to ring the bell just to be notified of my next video in time. I would appreciate if some constructive comments are left in the comment section below for the, for the better learning of all of us in the group. Please also keep watching this space for the next series, this part 2 of this series for better understanding of the whole machine. Thanks for watching. Thank you.